Math 3, Unit 9, Section 2. Today we're going to be talking about density. The density of a substance is a measure of how much mass is packed into a certain volume of the substance. Substances with a high density, like still, have molecules that are packed together tightly. Substances with a low density, like cork, have fewer molecules packed into the same amount of space. The density of a substance can be found by dividing its mass by its volume. As long as a substance is homogeneous, meaning the same, the size or shape of the sample doesn't matter. The density will always be the same. This means that a steel paper clip has the same density as a steel girder used to build a bridge. So density equals mass divided by volume. And here's your formula. I believe in um, your chemistry or biology classes, you also had like a special V type thing that you've used. It looks something kind of like this, I believe, where you have mass and density and volume. And so if this makes sense to you and you normally use that, that is totally fine too. I'm going to stick with this formula that we have here when I'm doing the problems. But if you do it a different way and get the same answer, that totally works. So first problem. What is the density of CO gas if 0.19 grams, or sorry, 0.196 grams occupies a volume of 100 milliliters? And so we are just going to use our formula. Another thing that I wanted to make a note of, actually I forgot to, is that units are very important. So make sure you're always writing units. Okay, so formula, density equals mass divided by volume. So right now they told us that 0.196 grams occupies a volume of 100 milliliters. And they are asking us, asking what is the density, okay? So we don't know the density, D equals, this is the mass, they're telling us a mass in grams, okay? That's 0.196 grams divided by the volume, volume goes on the bottom, 100 milliliters. And so in your calculator, which you should have, if you don't, you might wanna go grab one real quick. All we're gonna do is put 0.196 divided by 100 and we get that the density equals 0 0.00196 and we want to keep our units and so that is grams per milliliter and so when you have that division sign that means per so grams grams per milliliter and that's it that's my answer so we're going to get other information and other missing information but these problems are pretty simple Okay, B, a block of wood, three centimeters on each side, has a mass of 27 grams. What is the density of the block? So this time they told us what was going on with the block of wood. So if I look at a block of wood, I'm gonna try to draw a picture of a block of wood here, and you can all be impressed by that. Uh, so there's my block of wood and it says that it's three centimeters on each side so it's really like a square block of wood because it's saying three centimeters on each side so even though mine doesn't look accurate what they're saying is that it has three centimeters on each side so when you're finding density you need to know volume and so we're going to use what we did back in 9.2 or sorry 9.1 and 9.0 um, and find the volume of this block of wood so the volume for this block of wood is going to be three times three times three, and we multiply that all together, and we get 27, and that is centimeters cubed, because centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So my volume is 27 centimeters cubed. Now we're gonna move on to finding the density. So again, density equals mass divided by volume. If we look here, density equals mass was 27 grams, divided by the volume I found was 27 centimeters cubed. 
Now here, when we take 27 divided by 27, they actually cancel out and would reduce to be one. So this density is one gram per centimeters cubed. Okay, example C. A sample of copper with a mass of 89.6 grams has a density of 8.96 grams per centimeter cubed. What is the volume of a sample of copper? So this time I'm missing different information. We can see here that they're asking me this time, what is the volume, okay? So my equation, density equals mass divided by volume. If I plug in the information I know, I know my density, which is 8.96 grams over centimeters cubed, equals my mass, which is 89.6 grams, divided by my volume, which I don't know, so I'm going to put a V there. Okay. So just like yesterday when we are kind of dealing with our proportions, we cross multiply. So you could even think of this as over one, but what I'm gonna do is cross multiply here um, in order to solve. And so I end up with 8.96V equals 89.6. And we can put our units of measurement if you want to. And I know probably in your science classes you did. On this one, I can tell though, see how this is grams and this is grams and they match up? I know that my volume has to match with this. And so my units of measurement for my volume is gonna be what? Hopefully you said centimeters cubed. So I'm gonna just deal with my numbers right now and not dealing with my units. And, cause I've already figured out what that is. So next I'm gonna get the volume by itself by dividing 8.96 to both sides. These cancel out. Some of you might already know what the answer is for the volume without using your calculator, but for those that aren't sure, we'll go ahead and type it in, 89.6 divided by 8.96, and we end up with 10. So my volume is 10 centimeters cubed. Okay. Next example, a sample of iron has a density of 7.83 grams per centimeter cube. If, a, if the mass of this rectangular shaped object is 94 grams, what is the volume of the sample of iron? So again, it's missing different information. We're gonna go ahead and use our same formula. Density equals mass divided by volume. If we are looking at this problem, they told us what the density is. So I have 7.83 grams per or grams over centimeters cubed equals my mass, they told me is 94 grams. Divided by, we want to know what is the volume, the V. Okay, again, looking at this, what do you think my units of measurement will be for my volume? So hopefully you notice both of these are grams, which means that my volume is gonna have to be centimeters cubed. So we can not think about our units here for just a minute and look at our numbers. And just like I did previously, I could put this over one and we're gonna cross multiply. And so I get 7.83V, because I'm finding my volume, I multiplied those two together. And then one times 94 is 94. To get volume by itself now, I'm gonna divide both sides by 7.83. Those cancel out. And so we're gonna go ahead and take out our calculator. 94 divided by 7.83 and that is 12.01, if, oops, you can't see it, if I round that to the nearest hundredth. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say that volume equals 
And again, we found out that the units of measurement for this volume is centimeters cubed. A block of wood has a density of 0.6 grams per centimeter cubed. So again, they've given us the density. It states the mass of the block of wood is, so we have mass is 782 grams. And this time they ask us to find the length of the block of wood if its height is 10 and its width is 5. Okay, so I'm going to try to draw a picture here for you guys again. And we'll see how it turns out here. Again, it's not going to be um, greatly accurate, but it will get the point across. Okay, so there's our block of wood. And it says that we want to find, it says the height is 10, the width is 5, sorry, these are centimeters, and we want to know the other dimension, the length. And I know I probably didn't put all these in the right spots for you, but however you label it, that's fine. Um, we know that when we are finding the volume for something like this, um, we are doing what? So we're multiplying all of the dimensions, okay? So again, we know density equals mass divided by volume. If we're putting down everything that we know right now from this information here, we know that the density is 0.6 grams per centimeters cubed equals, we know that the mass is 700 and 82 grams, and we don't know what the volume is. So right now I should be able to find the volume for this block of wood based on all this information. Okay, and so just like we did before, if you look here, we have grams on the top, centimeters cubed on the bottom, so I know that the volume is gonna end up being centimeters cubed. So we're gonna not worry about our units right now, we're just gonna multiply. So 0.6 times volume is gonna be 0.6V equals, and if this was over one, or it is over one, we're gonna multiply one times 782, which is 782. To solve for the volume now, I'm gonna divide by 0 0.6 to both sides. And so in our calculator, 782 divided by 0 0.6 equals 1,000, oops, sorry, 1,303.3. So volume equals 1,303.3, and we know that is centimeters cubed. Okay, they did not ask me though what the volume is, but we know that the volume of this shape right here is that value. So now we have to work backwards again here in order to find out our missing dimension. So we can see here again, this is centimeters, 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 so it being centimeters cubed makes sense. We can go ahead and just deal with our numbers now and not have to worry about our units of measurement. If you're finding the volume of this rectangular pyramid, how do we find it? So hopefully you said length times width times height. Um, we would multiply x times five times 10. So this is 1,303.3 equals x times five times 10. 5 times 10 is 50, so we have 1,303.3 equals 50x. And then in order to find out what x is, we would divide by 50 to both sides. And so I actually still have this value here in my calculator. And so I'm just going to take that and divide by 50. And I find that x equals 26.5. 0, 7. And that right there is in what, um, what is my units? And so hopefully you said centimeters. And so that is my missing dimension, 26.07 centimeters. That is the length that they asked for in the question. 
So it's important that you always are reading and figuring out what exactly they are wanting you to find. And when you get your answer, double check that you actually are finding the answer that they're asking for. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on here. <clears throat> okay. The cylindrical shark tank below can accommodate up to two sharks whose maximum length will not exceed five feet. Okay. The question now for A says, what is the population density of the shark tank round to the nearest thousands of a shark per cubic meter? Meaning we're gonna round to the, to the nearest shark. We can't have half of a shark in a tank because it would no longer be living. Okay, so we're just gonna have you know, round to the nearest shark. Okay, so how population density works is, I'm gonna write here, population density equals the population, and in this case, because we're dealing with a cylinder, we're dealing with volume, okay? The volume that's inside. So population divided by the volume. When we get to, when we talk about population density for like a community, we live in um, square miles. We're not living in volume. Um, and so when you're talking about people in the area that they live on, it is dealing with square miles, not with volume. But for fish, they live actually within an enclosed thing here, which we have volume in there. Okay, so for this figure, we first have to figure out, well, what is the volume for this shark tank? And so how do we find the volume of a cylinder? So hopefully you remember that the volume of a cylinder is the base area, big V, times the height, H. So my base area, they are telling you here that this is nine meters. So what would, if you're finding the base area, which is a circle, it is pi r squared, so pi r squared times h, and in this case, what would my r be? Okay, so hopefully you said the radius, which would be half of that diameter, would be 4.5 meters. So we have pi, times 4.5 squared times the height of the cylinder, which is two. So if we take out our calculator here, 4.5 squared equals 20.25 times two equals 40.5. And so I'm going to put, I'm trying to think, um, this is 40.5 pi meters cubed, and I'm thinking it might be easier because when we're dealing with population, population of sharks is not actually going to be in terms of pi, and so we're going to go ahead and multiply um, our 40.5. Um, you can do times pi, or we could do times 3.14. Um, for us right now, because maybe, well, I think most of our calculators have pi on them, but just in case, let's just go ahead and multiply by 3.14. And so when I do that, I get 127.17. So we're just going to write or 127.17, and again, that's meters cubed. So that is the volume of my cylinder. So in order to find the population density, so I'm just going to put population density equals the population, okay? And do we know the population of sharks? So if you go back here, it says that this can accommodate two sharks, okay? And so that means we're gonna go two divided by 127.17. In my calculator, two divided by 127.17 equals, and so my population density equals point zero, let's do point zero one six, 
And this was sharks on top. And on the bottom, this was meters cubed. So that's 0 0.016 shark per cubic meter, or you can put meters cubed, okay? And so that right there is my answer for my population density. Okay, B. A public aquarium wants to build a tank large enough for five sharks. Based on the population density you found in part A, what will the volume of the tank need to be to hold the sharks? So this time, we want it to be five sharks, and our population density should be the same as it was in A. Okay, and so how will we set this up? So it should be the similar thing here, okay? And so we could either do it, hmm, there's a couple ways we can do it. I am thinking if we do population density should still be 0 0.016 equals, we want it to be five sharks, and then over x because we do not know what our volume should be. So if we multiply this out, we can put that over one, we would get 0 0.016, um, just kidding, 0 0.016x equals five. And then we divide both sides by 0 0.016. So let's check our calculator here. 5 divided by 0 0.016 equals, and I get x equals 312.5. And if you go back, this should end up being in meters cubed. Another way you could have solved this, and I'm not sure if you guys even want to know, but we knew that two sharks um, was over the volume 127.17. And so we wanted to see five sharks are over what? Um, that would also get you the same answer. And this is more like a proportion like we did back in 9.1. So this answer, you would get the same answer as you did here, okay? We're gonna go ahead and move on now though. So Chicago, Illinois has an area so you notice here they're telling us it has an area of 227.13 square miles and a population of 2,896,016. What is the population density? So just as I said before, when you're finding your population density, you take the population and then on, in this case, it's gonna be divided by our area okay and so my population so to find my population density our population is two million eight hundred and ninety six thousand and sixteen divided by the area which is two hundred twenty seven point one three also this is people we can abbreviate that as PPL and they told us this is square miles, or you could write that as miles squared. And in your calculator now, we're just gonna type those numbers, 2896016 divided by 227.13, and we end up getting, this is equal to 12,750.48, and again, this is in terms of people, and so we would probably go ahead and, and round that to 12,750, and that's people per miles squared. So either one of these answers are correct, just normally when you're dealing with people and stuff like that, you would round to the nearest person. Okay, one more like this, Fresno, California, um, had a population density of 4,540.7 and a population of 509,924 in 2013. 
find the area in square miles of Fresno, California. So again, our formula, population density equals the population divided by our area. And so this time though, they told us the population density right here, and they told us our population. So now we need to find the area. So population density, 4,540.7, equals our population, which is 509,924, divided by our area, which we don't know. I'm going to put that as x. So we cross multiply 4,540.7x equals 509,924. In order to get x by itself, we will divide 4,540.7 to both sides. We'll take out our calculator. So 509924 divided by 4540.7. And we get x equals 112.3. And what do you think this is going to be in? And in fact, if you go back and read, it says find the area in square miles. And so this is our miles squared or square miles, however you want to write it. And that is my answer. So your homework, worksheet 2, 1 through 12 all. And if you have any questions, I can answer them tomorrow.